Hi guys, this is my Alochi, and in this video we will go over alkene addition reactions and how to easily predict the correct products with the correct stereochemistry. So watch till the end for all of my tips and tricks. The first reaction is hydrohalogenation. The reagent for this reaction is HX, where X is a halogen such as chlorine, bromine, or iodine. In this reaction, how do we predict the product? Our double bond turns into a single bond and we add X or our chlorine, bromine, or iodine, depending on the reagent here, to the carbon from the double bond that is more substituted. So these are the two carbons that have the double bond. These, these are them. This carbon is secondary because it's attached to two carbons and this carbon is primary because it's attached to one carbon. So we will add our chlorine to the more substituted carbon from where the double bond was. So we're attaching it here. The other carbon gets the hydrogen from here, which I don't have to show, so I didn't show it. This reaction would have rearrangements. Rearrangements are possible and that's something that we have to watch out for. Please watch my other YouTube videos for more rearrangements practice and for understanding how to do rearrangements with these types of reactions. So let's go ahead and continue. The second reaction is very similar to the first reaction we did and it's acid catalyzed hydration. Again, we start with alkene and I just want to pay your attention to the fact that all of these reactions need to begin with alkene. We have to start with the C double bond C to do any of these reactions. If we don't have an alkene, they will not happen. So in this reaction, alkene reacts with water and an acid catalyst. The acid catalyst, catalyst most of the time is sulfuric acid H2SO4 but it could be also H2O, H3O+, plus, or just H3O+, plus. so water with any acid catalyst. What do we do? How do we predict the product? We turn double bond into single bond and we add OH to the most substituted carbon from the double bond, which is called the Markovnikov rule. So let's look at this molecule. Here's our double bond. We turned it into a single bond and we added OH to the most substituted carbon from the carbons that had the double bond. So our OH got added to this carbon, just like in the last example. This rule is called the Markovnikov rule. Again, just like before, rearrangements are possible. Here they wouldn't happen. This is a very simple example, but watch out for rearrangements and watch my other videos on how to predict rearranged products. Next reaction is hydroalkoxylation. And here again, it's like the reaction that we did above, but instead of water, we have an alcohol R is any kind of a hydrocarbon chain. So it could be CH3OH or it could even be a ring. So any types of carbons. We start with an alkene and the reagent is ROH with any acid catalyst. We do exactly the same thing as we have done before, but instead of adding OH to the most substituted carbon, we're going to add OR to the most substituted carbon. So for example, here we see that we have ethanol with H2SO4. So we turn our double bond to a single bond and we add O with two carbons, OCH2, CH3 to the more substituted carbon. Again, the other carbon gets a hydrogen, which I have not shown here or in the previous example, but the less substituted carbon gets the hydrogen. Next reaction is halogenation. The reagent for halogenation is either Br2 or Cl2, and the solvent is usually CH2Cl2. In this reaction, to predict the product, we turn double bond into single bond and we add two bromines or chlorines, one on each carbon from the double bond. The stereochemistry has to be trans, which means one bromine will be wedged and one will be dashed. So for example, let's look here. We have a double bond. Our reagent is Br2CHCl2. We turn the double bond into single bond and we add two bromines, one on each carbon from where the double bond was, and they add trans. So this bromine is on a wedge, this one is on a dash. 
If this bromine is on a wedge, there is also a methyl group here that we need to remember to show. And if the bromine is on a wedge, the, bro uh, the methyl group will be on a dash. Or this bromine could be on a dash and this bromine could be on a wedge. So two products are possible and these are enantiomers. We do have to remember that the stereochemistry for this reaction is trans. It's really important and how to predict the product. Let's continue. Now we have halogenation of alkenes in the presence of water. So before we had Br2 with the, or Cl2 with the solvent, CH2Cl2, but now we have it inside the water. What is the difference? We turn double bond into single bond and we have to add OH to the most substituted carbon from where the double bond was and bromine on chlorine to the last substituted carbon from where the double bond was. Stereochemistry is again trans. So let's go ahead and take a look. Double bond here, what do we do? We turn it into a single bond. These are the two carbons that had the double bond. This carbon is more substituted, it's tertiary, and this carbon is less substituted, it's secondary. To the most substituted carbon, we add an OH. To the less substituted carbon, we add bromine. How do we add OH and bromine? Trans. So OH, OH would be on a wedge and bromine would be on a dash, or we could do it the other way around. So we will get two products. Next reaction is oxymercuration. The reagent for oxymercuration is first step, HgOC2 with water, Second step is NaBH4. What happens here? Even though this reagent is really lengthy, predicting the product is very simple. All we have to do is we have to turn double bond into single and we have to add OH to the most substituted carbon from the carbons that were holding the double bond. So turn double into single and we add OH. These are the two carbons that had the double bond and this carbon is more substituted. So this is the carbon to which I add my OH group. It is really, really important to know that this reaction has no rearrangements. We have seen a reaction before that added OH to the most substituted carbon. Let's just look at it. Here it was, acid catalyzed hydration. And you would say, okay, but they do the same thing. What's the point? Well, the point is that this reaction, you could have rearrangements. So you could have products that you did not expect. But in this reaction, in oxymercuration, you don't have any rearrangements. And so if you want to do synthesis, then you should do this reaction if you want to make sure that your OH goes to the most substituted carbon. This is a great reaction for the synthesis. Let's go ahead and go to the next one. The next one is a uh, different kind of oxymercuration. It's alkoxymercuration. Again, all of these start with an alkene with a double bond. My reagent will be HgOAC2 with an alcohol, ROH. Again, this ROH could be, for example, CH3OH, CH3CH2OH, a ring with OH, and so on. And the second step is NaBH4. What do we have to do? We turn our double bond into single and we add, and this is supposed to say OR. We add OR to the most substituted carbon from the double bond. So in the previous one, we added OH. In the oxymercuration, we add OH to the most substituted carbon from the two carbons that had the double bond. And here we are adding OR. Again, no rearrangements are possible. So let's take a look. This is our molecule starting material. Our reagent is HgOEC2 with CH3OH. So that's what we're going to be adding. We turn double bond into single bond. And the most substituted carbon, there are two carbons here. This one is more substituted, secondary. This one is... This is secondary, this is primary, this one is attached to two carbons, this is only two one. The secondary more substituted carbon from the two carbons that had the double bond gets an OR group. What is OR group? It's O and then 
the carbons that follow the oxygen. So here is just the methyl group. Here is just OCH3. This OR group will depend what your what your alcohol here is. Next reaction, one of the most famous reactions. Let's get ahead and take a look here. It is called hydroboration. We can recognize it because we have a boron here. So hydroboration, boration, boron. We start with the double bond. Our reagents are BH3 with CHF. And this first step and second step is H2O2, NaOH. Now, the boron, uh, the boron source could be different. So this is another reagent that could be used. Instead of BH3CHF, we could use, for example, B2H6 diglime. But this one is more, is more popular, the first one. What do we have to do? We turn double bond into a single bond, and we add OH to the least substituted carbon from the double bond. So this is anti-Markovnikov, which is very rare. So far, we have seen everything adds into the most substituted carbon. Now we see OH adds into the least substituted carbon. The other carbon will get a hydrogen. OH and hydrogen adds sin. So they will be both either on a dash or on a wedge. Let's look at this example. I have a double bond. I turn it into a single bond. This is secondary, this is primary. These are the two carbons that were holding the double bond. The primary carbon is last substituted. I give it an OH. Secondary will receive a hydrogen, which I did not show here. Let's take a look at another example. Let's say I have something like this. And I do hydroboration here. What would my product be? Well, here the two carbons are the same, so it doesn't matter to which carbon I add the OH group. So I'm going to add, for example, OH here, and I'm going to add hydrogen here, and I have a methyl group also. But what about the stereochemistry? Well, OH and H, we said they add on the same side, so they will be either both dash or wedge. So for example, I could show them both on the wedge, and... I will have another product here where they will be both on a dash. And here stereochemistry matters because this molecule is a chiral molecule. Here it didn't matter because none of these carbons were chiral carbons. So this is hydroboration. The most important thing to know is that hydroboration results with OH on the least substituted carbon from where the double bond was. So if you're doing a synthesis and you see that your product has an OH on the least substituted carbon, that might be a hint that hydroboration was needed for that step. Next is synhydroxylation. The reagents for that one is first step OSO4, second step H2O2, or first step KMnO4, second step H2O, OH minus. What happens here? We turn our double bond into a single bond, turn double into single, and we add two OHs, one on each carbon from the double bond. Stereochemistry sin. So we show both of them wedge on a wedge, or both of them go on a dash. So for example, this is my molecule. I turn double into single, and I add the two OHs, and they're both can be either on a wedge or on a dash. If this OH is on a wedge, then the methyl next to it has to be on a dash. And if this OH is on a dash, the methyl has to be on a wedge because I had a methyl here. 